Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about ASA. So ASA stands for Adaptive Security Appliance. So this is basically a firewall. So in this video we are going to discuss about ASA firewall. So now for understanding, let's suppose that we are working in an organization. So that's maybe any, any campus or any building there. We are working in that organization and that organization has their own infrastructure. There's its own network. We call it like inside network or we call it as also the trusted network. Because this is everything is owned by some organization. We call it the trusted network or inside network. And uh, as we are living in a global village, so our organization also needs to communicate with outside world. So that can be some other networks. We call that as outside network. That can be, for example, that can be internet, for instance. But we call it outside network. And also, this is known as untrusted network. And in this simple situation, this simple scenario, the users from inside network, they can actually access the outside network and the users from outside network, they can also access the inside network. And if there is no problem, then they can exchange the information and everything works fine. But the problem occurs when there is some unauthorized user, so any unauthorized user there, and that unauthorized users want to access the data available on this trusted part of the network. Maybe we have some accounting information, some transactions or some pictures or whatever we have in this inside network. This user, this untrusted user or this unauthorized users can access it. And this is the point where we need some 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 security guard we need some firewall there so firewall is basically a fireproof wall to protect us from these flames because this in this case these flames are basically the unauthorized users who want to access our network now in networking specifically we call the firewalls are something which protects our uh, inside network from the outside or the public network or the untrusted network so these firewalls can be some dedicated device or this they, they can also be software but in this video we are specifically uh, discussing the cisco product that is asa and that cisco product acts as a firewall for our network and that cisco asa double five double zero specifically are talking about the series and this series is based on its old um, I mean firewall Cisco PIX 500 series and this also is based on Cisco IPS this intrusion prevention system and also Cisco VPN series concentrator so VPN stands for virtual private networks so this is based on these uh, things and for the details, you can see, I can put the link in the description section. And so there is, there is a link on Cisco I have put there. So further details are there. Anyway, now this Cisco ASA5500 is based on these different technologies. And on the basis of these different technologies, this ASA firewall can actually act as uh, an application aware firewall. So application aware firewall means this can actually block our allow some uh, some specific applications to enter in our inside network so that we can we can block at the application level uh, layer as well and it can also be used to create virtual private connections so vpn so using ipsec and issl that can this the same firewall can also be used to create these vpn connections and then we these firewalls can also act as for 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 antivirus we can protect our network from these viruses this can also act as an anti-spam and anti-phishing as well as this can also act as a network address translator and also we can configure access control list on these firewalls so you can see these are many functions performed by this asa firewalls this is the reason that this is known as adaptive security so adoptive security appliance performing many jobs so now as per policy these and these asa are these firewalls 
I can allow the host from inside network to initiate a communication or can communication link to the outside network. So it means the users from inside network, they can reach the outside network like this one. But the hosts which are on the outside network, they cannot initiate a connection to the inside network. So this is not, this is not allowed. They can't extend like this one. They can't access this one, this is not allowed. And then for inside users, the firewall monitors the state of connection or session. So for example, what happens here, these users on this inside part, when they make a request for information from the outside network, then in response to that request, some, some data is expected to come back to the inside network. So in that case, these firewalls actually maintain some, uh, some state information in this state table. So let's say that maybe this user requested for some specific information and now if some traffic which is actually uh, which actually belongs to that session then that information will be allowed because that is the part of the request made by some users from the inside network so with the help of a state table they can act they can allow that specific traffic so that's actually known as a stateful inspection that's done by this this firewall and so this is also possible with this ASA5500 series firewall. Now, in some of the situations, for example, in case when inside network wants to share some services or some servers with the outside network. So by default, what we mentioned that these, these, these users in the outside network, they can't access that. They cannot access the resources on this inside part of the network. But let's say this uh, from the inside network, we want to share some of the servers with the outside world. For example, we can share this. Maybe I have some server with this. For instance, I want to share with this rest of the world. Then in that case, we can actually define some DMZ zone, specifically demilitarized zone. So this is also possible to create DMZ zone on ASA firewall. Now in that DMZ zone, so this will be the specific zone which will be accessible by both of the users. It means the users from the inside network as well as the outside networks, they can access the servers or the databases which is available in the DMZ zone. So users from outside network, they can reach DMZ, but the some users will not be able to reach the inside network as per this firewall policy. And then, but the users from inside network, they can reach DMZ as well as the outside network. They can reach this part as well as this part. Now, this is how this AA, uh, this, sorry, this uh, ASA5505, uh, ASA firewall looks like. You can see here in this firewall, we have these uh, ports. So we have these eight ports, like you can see this one, eight ports there. And now to create these different, uh, I mean, different inside network and the outside network, as well as DMZ, how we create using this uh, firewall. So we have these different ports and what we do on this ASA firewall, we actually configure some logical VLANs. So logical virtual lens, we configure them and we assign these physical ports. You see, we have these eight physical ports on this ASA firewall. So we assign these physical ports to those VLANs. And we configure those VLANs. It means we assign the IP addresses to those VLANs. We give names to them. And so we, are, we, we just assign these ports to those different interfaces. And maybe one of the VLAN interface, we call it as inside zone. And some VLAN, we call it as an outside zone are the outside network and some of the VLAN interface, we call it as a DMZ. But how we know, how the router knows that which one is the inside part, which interface is actually for the inside network, which interface is being used for the outside one, how we define. So for that, we have this, uh, uh, we have, the, we define this using some security levels. 
And now these security levels uh, are represented by some numbers. So these numbers range from zero to 100. And if we assign a number of zero to some of the interface, like we have from zero to 100, and as we mentioned that we will be creating some logical VLANs or world VLAN interfaces. And if we assign some interface a security level of zero, it means that VLAN interface will be considered as an untrustworthy interface. Untrustworthy interface means that interface will be actually the part of outside network. And if we create maybe, so when say we say VLAN one, and we assign the security level of zero, it means that it will be the outside. And if we say, for example, if we have VLAN two, and we call it, we, we assign it an interf a, an, uh, a security level of 100, it means that is the very trustworthy interface. It means that very trustworthy interface is representing the inside network and something between zero and 100. So any value in between them, that value can be assigned to this DMZ. So that particular VLAN interface will act uh, in the DMZ zone and the DMZ zone can be accessed by inside users as well as the outside users. So this is how that we assign maybe for example if we draw here maybe if we out of four just for illustration say we said these two ports belongs to this interface and this interface has security level of maybe 50 it means now those ports will be the part of this DMZ and maybe we say that these two parts will be the part of an interface whose security level is 100 it means now those two ports will be the part of this one in the same way if we say this remaining two ports will be the part of this VLAN interface and if we assign a security level of maybe zero it means now those parts will be the part of outside networks in this way we can configure it and we will configure it in our next video so for example in the inside network security level is 100 and for the outside network we can assign security level of zero and maybe dmz we can assign some security level of 50 or 70 in between them and now as we discussed that from from higher secure level the traffic can go to lower secure level like this one this is allowed and for this one we need to define some of the policies in our in our ASA firewall and uh, one more point is that out of these eight ports we have two ports those two ports actually support PoE power over Ethernet and we can connect maybe our access points or camera where they can get the power along with the data from these these two ports and for ASA configuration we will take something uh, left in our next uh, video where will we configure some of the ports in, in some specific VLAN and that VLAN we can assign different maybe uh, security level like 100 security level so that will be your inside and outside we will configure maybe security level of zero and then we can also define some third interface and some ports will be assigned to them and then we'll configure this ASA firewall for different uh, policies to allow or block some of the traffic and but we'll do this thing in our next video for this video we just covered very basics about ASA firewall and hoping this was a bit helpful for you and um, hope to see you in another video thank you